you guys, you guys just witnessed history. For the first time, the kittens got behind Dan's liquor. <laughs> yeah, she's back there. She's back no. behind the expensive shit. No. Dan has ordered custom doors for the bar to keep out. the kittens out of it. Out. Oh, it's a wonderful way to celebrate International Cat Day, isn't it? Here. <laughs> She's like, no, fuck you. It's International Cat Day. I do what I want. Will not fuck up my scotch. <laughs> we're, we're waiting on the uh, custom doors he ordered for the bar to come in so he can protect the booze. Protect. Especially since Peggy's an angry drunk. What? We learned that when they got spayed and they were still oh. on painkillers. And Peggy was walking around the house like fucking Russell Crowe trying to murder everything <laughs> that was Poor Dottie was just hiding under the couch like, please help me. <laughs> oh my God, Peg, you really got me. See, that's, that's, that is one of the nice things about Grady. He just, he, no, no fight in him whatsoever. They almost never scratch on purpose, but when they're ready to be put down, they're fucking ready to be put down. And they will take chunks out of you as necessary if the squeaking doesn't work. But they almost never scratch you. Like, I can't remember them ever having scratched us because they wanted to harm us. They just are like, no, we down. And then, you know. Look at this. Grady, Grady is much more sedate than my little girls. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say he's sedate so much as he's just a doofus. Your cat's... I like, I like his water dance. What the hell was that? I don't know. I've never seen anything like I'm, that. I'm going to share that with the class here. Yeah. Yeah, let, let, let's let everybody at home see this, because it is the weirdest fucking thing. Dottie. Dottie. Now Dottie's in the booze. <laughs> You see that little butt that just jumped in behind the expensive shit? <laughs> Cats in my booze! We found a new place to hang out. That's what they do. Yeah. Let's see, where is where is the water dance? Yeah, I my cat does this every time. Every time he drinks water, he does this. Every single time. It's like a weird, not really a moonwalk. And then, instead of actually sitting, he flops over on one <laughs> side. That's what I really like, is he can't drink water sitting up. He has to like and lay down. drops his head in the bowl. Because drinking the water is just too much work to do while also standing or sitting up. Except when he eats food, he does it like a normal cat. He crouches down and lays down flat. But the water thing, no, no, he has to do this little ritual with the water. Miracle used to only drink, she would drink from the far side of the bowl. So like, you know, if you have your bowl, she'd like go all the way to the far side and lick the water like up the inside of the bowl. A miracle is a weird cat, like. <sighs> well, Grady also got covered in poop again this weekend. I saw that. We haven't had poop cat in a while. Like, these girls are pretty good about not fucking with their poop. They attack each other while they're in the litter box. But how did he wind up covered in poop again? I don't, he got some poop stuck on his butt, and then he dragged his he dragged it to get the poop off his butt, which made the poop smear into him, and it smeared all over the carpet. And okay, you can go down. Go 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 play. Go play. You have you have much floofier cat than I do. I have much stupider cat than you do. Well, he's super floofy, so poop is gonna go everywhere. Like yep. these girls are pretty short haired. Uh, they don't get too poopy. Well, now that we've covered the important stuff, it's time for the nonsense. Yeah. And we've got some interesting As soon as you post the pictures, by the way, people are like, Great, we're gonna hear poop stories on the show again. Well fuck them. I don't care. It's my show. Exactly. Eat a dick. It's your fucking show if you don't want to hear about cat poop. Yes, exactly. Eat a dick. All right. So, time for This is my blood from being scratched by my cat. Okay. I'm just going to hold this paper towel in my arm until the bleeding stops. Each week, 
Catherine and the Radio Dead Air audience go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And this week, every you know, people were saying on my Twitter, Nash, I, I've noticed a curious thing. We haven't had any naked crazy in a while. Why is that, Nash? Why hasn't there been any naked crazy on the show? And you know what they say about... Yes, ye shall receive. Be careful what the fuck you wish for. Uh, this one comes to us from Pennsylvania. So when you're shopping for a wedding dress, there are a lot of things you expect, like sticker shock. Or maybe, you know, you, you're just not going to look quite right in the dress. You're, what things you don't expect is a naked man brandishing a mannequin's arm and bashing his head against the glass inside the shop. Wow. Okay. Though that would be on the do not expect list. The co-owner. The co-owner. This wasn't a lunatic who broke in. No. Peter Scolieri, 54, was spotted last Wednesday evening inside One Enchanted Evening, a Pittsburgh, <laughs> area, a Pittsburgh area firm that describes itself as the premier bridal prom and pageant boutique of Western Philadelphia. Scolieri, a female witness told cops, was, quote, fully naked, no shirt, shoes, pants, or anything. The bridal store was closed as Scolieri mingled with the mannequins wearing wedding dresses. While standing in front of the front window, Scolieri reportedly displayed an erection, was holding a hand bar. Displayed. Like, they couldn't just say he had an <laughs> erection. Did he have it? Did he, like, thump it on top of a little <laughs> pedestal? <laughs> displayed an erection. Ta da! Behold! Is it? Did he hang some bunting off of it? He, he was, just had an erection, okay? Let's not get fancy. The witness snapped a cell phone photo, photo of Scolieri, who owns the bridal shop with his wife, Linda. Scolieri... He there into some shit, apparently. Scolieri, who admitted to consuming, quote, a few drinks, began bashing his head on the window and had to be told to stop multiple times. Why won't they turn into Kim Cattrall? <laughs> that, that wasn't a documentary, bro. Oh. What? What? Okay. What sequence no of a how hard you get? They're not they're not anatomically correct. What sequence of events led here? I feel like drinking watching mannequin led here. <laughs> because what the what the what the shit? Come here, doodle bug. Ow, ow, hi doodle bug. Say hi. 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 Yeah, I, I feel like drinking and watching Andrew McCarthy movies is probably what got us to this point. Or some weird marital interests that I'm not here to judge. Oh, yeah, because we, we never judge on Radio Dead Air. But they should probably get a real doll for that instead. <laughs> I mean, if you own the place, okay, but... Maybe play your kinky games with the mannequins in the back room. Yes. Not the front window. Yes. Let me see like, what... If you want to play kinky games with your own mannequins, fine. Just sponge them off after you put any expensive dresses on them. Or before you put any expensive dresses on them. Yes. And don't do it in the front window. No. Don't. Don't. That's That's bad. No, yeah. Glad I didn't look there to pick up my wedding dress. <laughs> that would be um, fun, though. Can you imagine if we were like, let's go wedding dress shopping? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what Dan would do if we rolled up on the bridal parlor and there was a naked man, like, bashing his head against the window. Will Jr., of course. How much is that boner in the window? <laughs> I, I picture Dan just being like, 
Let's look somewhere else. Yeah, we, we just go. Let's just go somewhere. Okay, so you remember a couple years back the um the monkey Jesus picture. Yes. Where a lady, I believe it was in Italy, or it might have been Spain or Italy, I forget which one, but uh, saw an ancient picture, an old, old Renaissance picture, and decided to fix it and so turn... It needs professional restoration. I can... Anybody can paint Jesus. Yeah, and turn turn Jesus into a monkey. Into squishy Jesus. Squishy Jesus, yes. Well, we have something similar. Only add on top of this a little bit of copyright bullshit. Okay, let, let, let's throw this out to, to the group here. Um, three across... Very brass, very brash, very arrogant. Four letters. Pensioner fills in crossword puzzle art exhibits claims copyright of new work. <laughs> the lawyer of a 90-year-old woman who mistakenly filled in an art exhibit in the form of a crossword puzzle claims she holds the copyright of the new work in 19, the 1977 creation by 20th century artist Arthur Kopke, I think I'm saying that right, Kopke, uh, was lent to Nuremberg's Neues Museum uh, by a private collector and said to be worth about 68,000 pounds. The retired German dentist, Hannah Lohr, her full name has not been released, visited the gallery along with other pensioners last month. During a half-hour interview with the local police following the discovery of her additions to Kopke's work, the woman said she started filling in the artist artwork crossword puzzle because it bore the phrases, insert words, and so it suits. These were written in English, the language she understands, and she took them to be a serious invitation to use the crossword cues to fill in the empty squares. She said if the museum did not want people to follow the artist's instructions, they should have placed a warning notice alongside it. That's kind of true. No, it's, it's... It is. If you saw a painting hanging at the Met that said, punch me with a target, and nothing specifically said not to punch it, how many people a day do you think would punch that painting? What? If they put a... Big fucking red button in the middle of the May with the sign that said do not touch. That button would get hit 16 times a day. Well, one, it's New York. And two, it's not in the museum. It's a museum. It's a museum piece. It's a just. How is a crossword puzzle museum level art? How is taking a picture from an old comic book and making it really, really big new art? Art is art. It's fucking weird. Artists are... But what's really getting me is just... I'm trying to defend that because I like pop art. <laughs> but what's really getting me here is just the the, the sheer cojones of after defacing it... I kind of... After defacing it to say, no, no, now I own the copyright on it because it's a transformative work. And thus... I get all the monies. I'm kind of with her. <laughs> I kind of respect that. That's, that is, that is, my God. I mean, if you're just going to hang a piece of paper that looks like a crossword puzzle up on the wall, what the fuck do you think is going to happen? Put it behind a rope or something. Did she solve the puzzle, though? That's the really important question. My mom used to be really into crossword puzzles, okay? And Sunday mornings, you could not walk through the kitchen in my house without my mom. You, like, you, it was kind of like the troll on the bridge. Like, you had to solve the puzzle. You had to answer her riddle before you could leave the kitchen. <laughs> like, wait, wait, no. What's a five-letter word for rutabaga? Mom, mom, I don't, I don't know. I need this one. Okay, like, you couldn't get through the kitchen until you answered her question. And that was Sunday mornings. So I feel like if she saw this, she would have filled it in too. Okay, so let's move from uh, 
Germany back to uh, Ari Arizona. I think this is Arizona. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not very good at this. Um, you know, I, I, I bear grudges. I, I will freely admit this. For long periods of time. But there comes a point where you've got to let a grudge go. You just simply have to. Whether it's for practical reasons, whether it's for pragmatic reasons, or because the ass has been dead for decades. Phoenixville man admits vandalizing grave over 56 year grudge. Wow. Phoenixville man admitted in court that he vandalized the tombstone of man against whom he held a, a grudge for more than 50 years. Polly Donovan Jr., 69, of the 1200 block of South Evergreen Drive, pled guilty Tuesday in Montgomery County Court to a misdemeanor charge of institutional vandalism of a cemetery. Donovan was sentenced to two years probation ordered to pay $1,500 in restitution. According to the criminal complaint, Donovan told police that he and the deceased were childhood friends and that 56 years ago, the deceased stole $300 from a box in his bedroom. When police questioned Donovan, he admitted to defacing the, t the tombstone. Um, the investigation began when a woman reported that on March uh, 2014 that her father's tombstone in uh, the cemetery had the name John written over it in orange spray paint. The same tombstone was vandalized again with the same name in, spray co in the same spray color paint uh, in April. Uh, in December, someone damaged the tombstone by pouring a black tar-like substance over it. Police set up hidden cameras to catch few tracks of vandalism. In May, the cameras caught an image of a man stealing lights that had been set up to deter vandalism. After the tombstone was vandalized again in November, this time with black spray paint covering the last name of the deceased, police were able to identify the suspect as Donovan. So, you are 69 years old. When you... We're kids. Yeah. This dude stole money from you. It is 50 plus years later. You are supposed to be retired. You could be fucking fishing. You could be watching TV. You could be doing all. You could be. He can't be watching TV because he needed that 300 bucks to buy one. You could be playing the Pokemons, but no, you're out in a graveyard. Your old ass is in a fucking graveyard, spray painting tombstones of a guy who's dead. Who's John? I don't know. Nobody in the story is named John, but no. that's the name he kept spraying on the grave. Are we looking at a grudge or a haunting? Is it could be like you know when you, when you're online and people are like, "My hi, I'm John," but all my friends call me Johnny. I'm gonna call you John then. You're John. His name is William. <laughs> I'm not your friend. Dead guy's name is William, and his middle initial is T. There's nobody named John, and who is John? <laughs> <laughs> this is what's gonna bug me. I mean, and I'm kind of disappointed that this reporter didn't bother to try and find out who the fuck John is. It, the, if you have a grudge with someone and they die, congratulations, you win. You you win. You got it. You you. You. I, mean, I guess he didn't get my his three hundred dollars back. And I don't know if you read this part. He said he would pay the fine minus the three hundred dollars. <laughs> Anything to do with that shit. I'll, oh yeah, I'll pay the fine, except the money that motherfucker took from me. Bro, he's dead. I did, dude, this $300 is $300. I mean, oh. what the fuck, man? Although I have to say, when I'm 69, I, I hope I have enough just energy and, and moxie, as it were, to go out and fuck with shit and like this. deface graves? Well, you know what? When you get you're to 69, you hope you're well enough to deface the graves of your enemies. When you pass a certain point in life, you gain like a magic superpower and it's like old people power. You are free to not give any kind of a fuck ever again. 
Apparently you're not. Well, usually. Usually. Although that said, back in my Sephora days, we had a woman who worked at the store who was 80. She was awesome. She was like everybody's grandma. <laughs> she was kind of a psychic. But the shit she could get away with saying to customers, like, if I said it to a customer, I'd be fired and slapped. Like, she would just walk up to people and be like, no, honey, that's not not with your complexion. Come with me. Yeah, because... You... And next thing you know, they'd be in the chair for an hour and buy $400 worth of shit off her. When you get to be 80, everything's cool. I had a woman. I saw a woman ask her about mascara that wouldn't smudge. And I swear to God, this woman, this little old Italian woman goes... You're oriental. So your eyelashes point down. So unless you're curling them, there's nothing you can do. Come sit down. I'll show you how to do it. And I'm like, oh, my God, she's not a rug. Like, you can't you can't say that to people. But they get away with it. This this woman bought like a whole bunch of shit off her, got a whole makeover and walked out her best friend. She's a little lady. All right. Well, uh, moving on. Florida wouldn't be a show without Florida. Uh, so, in America, in a lot of places, marijuana is slowly becoming legal. It's it's legal to own to a certain level, and it's being regulated, and it's being. It, we're still not all the way there yet because we have some federal issues with it. But in many places, Florida is not one of them. Not it should be not. <laughs> I don't even think, like, Benadryl should be in Florida. Man with big pot plant in bed of pickup, unable to avoid detection. Just driving around like that, huh? If you stop your pickup truck after running a traffic sign, deputies may cut you some slack. But if you speed away and have a fully grown marijuana plant in your pickup truck's bed, not so much. According to an arrest affidavit, the latter happened about 12.45 a.m. in Vero Beach. Uh, sheriff's deputies spotted a Toyota Tacoma running a stop sign. This Toyota's lights were turned off as it sped west. Deputies stopped the truck. Upon walking to the vehicle on the driver's side, I observed a fully grown marijuana plant located in the bed of the truck in plain view. The driver said he was sorry he hit the sign. Apparently he hit the stop sign. Asked why he didn't call police and uh, after striking the sign, Jacob said he didn't know. You didn't know you hit a stop sign? He didn't know why he didn't call police. Maybe, oh. maybe it's the big fucking marijuana plant in the that back. Be, that could be why. That could in fact be why he did not call the, because you got a big, you got a big marijuana plant in your truck. What yeah. the you should probably throw a tarp over that or yeah. something if yes. you're going to drive around in public. The driver, Joshua Jacobs, 30. Um, some might theorize he didn't stop and call police because of the marijuana plant. The passenger said he didn't see the plot plant in the truck. Really? I ain't seen shit. Although... To be fair... I've, I've, I've had friends who have big pickup trucks, and I don't exactly examine the bed of their truck before I get in. You think you would see a giant fucking pot plant sticking but out? But that's kind of hard to miss, yeah. It's one of those, I, I ain't see nothing. Coincidentally, I have glaucoma and a prescription right here, so I'm fine. What a twist. <laughs> You can, okay, look, I know pot is one of those things that probably should be legal. It probably should be at this point. I, I don't really see why we're so uptight about it. But we're not all the way there yet. Right. We still have the laws. You, st you can't just be like, well, it should be. That's nice. Should be isn't is. Yeah, you can't go up in front of the judge and say, well, it should be legal. And the judge will say, it should be. Oh. But you know what else? You broke the law, so your ass should be in jail. That's how yeah. that works. <sighs> and <laughs> why didn't you call the police? I don't know. No reason. No, no, no reason. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. But what's a, what's a police? <clears throat> what's a cop? What, who, what's a truck? 
I, I'm I'm not well, from here. I just beam down from Mars, actually. Right. I, I, I don't even know where I am. Foreign exchange student. It's Candy yeah. Graham. Land shark. <sighs> you know, you gotta try what you can try. Okay. You remember earlier this year the whole thing with Harambe the, the gorilla? Yeah. And this is this is driving me fucking crazy. There's a, a meme about this the fucking Harambe going around the internet, which I do not comprehend. Apparently people think it's hilarious that a gorilla got shot to death. Yeah, because people are horrible. But uh, it did get ingrained into the national psyche about these are wild animals. This is a zoo, not where your kids should be. Apparently it did not reach Dublin. <sighs> Dublin Zoo launches inquiry after child photographed in rhino enclosure. Oh my god, those are really dangerous. Dublin Zoo has lost an in launched an inquiry after a young boy was photographed inside a rhino enclosure. The photos emerged on social media over the weekend showing the youngster standing on the wrong side of the fence and a man holding his hand from the viewing side. And here's the pictures right down there. There he is. There's, see, there's the kid. There's a big fucking rhino. That's not okay. See, see, there's a kid. There's a rhino. Is my cousin on tonight? No, he's not in the chat. Otherwise, I could yell at him. My, my cousin Brian lives in Dublin, and sometimes he's here for the show, but not today. The photos emerged. Um, a, a spokeswoman for the zoo said the incident was being reviewed internally. Uh, one of the photos of the incident Saturday afternoon was taken by art architect uh, Kieran Kieran Ferry, thank you, uh, who posted it on Twitter. Photographs show the young youngster, yes, less than a yard from the fence, standing on large boulders which act as an additional barricade several feet above the ground. The adult can be seen taking photos of him while passerbys take fake photos of the two of them. Here's the thing. <clears throat> you could get the exact same picture you're going to get. If you got, if you rolled over, say, a chair or something and stood that kid in front of the fence. And just crop the fence out. Just crop you get the that exact fence. Same picture. He's not that far in. Like, you don't need to do this. Also, those fences seem awfully low to me in general. Rhinos, rhinos are territorial. They are yeah. big, angry. They, they, they don't have that. It is literally a battering ram. That horn is not a hat rack. No. That is there to put holes in things which have blood in them. Yeah. It's really good at it, too. They don't like when you come to their house. They don't invite people over. <laughs> they, they, you know, rhinos don't send out RSVPs. Those fucking rhinos never have us over for tea. They don't. You, you don't, you got them, they, they are big. Well, how much, I think they weigh upwards of two tons, if not more. I think so. They're elephant sized. That they, yeah. they're, they're great big, unhappy. They're like, you know, very- with death horn. With a fucking death horn. You know, they, 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 it's not like with a bull, bull run straight forward and slam into you. The, the rhino has that horn on the nose to do the hook, throw your ass. So not only are you bleeding, you're airborne. <laughs> Your blood is going everywhere. You're like a Jackson Pollock of the wilderness. Well, that's evocative. A little bit, a little bit, uh, little, little too inside baseball for everybody. A little bit of a deep cut there. A little too Zack Snyder. A little too Zack Snyder. Okay. I'm turning into like pre 9-11 Dennis Leary up in here. I mean, uh, Dennis, Dennis Miller up in here. But yeah, that's that's the dumbest part is you could have taken the exact same picture with the kid on the other side of the fence. Like, right. you, didn't, you didn't have to do I this mean, the thing you did. Look at this picture. If you just took a picture of the kid from here up, they wouldn't even know there was a fucking fence. Right. And I love the fact that when other people saw this happening, instead of going, hey, 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 get the kid out of there, they went, I'm going to get a picture of this. Yeah. What the fuck? Stupid human in natural habitat. It's actually, it's actually just a new display at the zoo. It's their new feature. 
human idiots. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's this this could have ended tragically. Yeah, I mean, thank God. I'm assuming that kid's okay. Yeah, we could have ended up with a dead child. We could have ended up with a dead rhino. We could have ended up with both. Don't do this. It's this is not fucking Disneyland. No. Fuck, even at Disneyland, you wouldn't that's put your- That's not a minimum wage employee in a costume. No! That's not, he's not, he's, he's not goofy. No. He's not gonna come up and hug your child. Mm -mm. He's gonna turn him into like a, a, a red and brown muck under its hooves, is what it's gonna do. It's gonna liquefy your- They don't have hooves. They have these nice big flat feet that are made to stomp the shit out of you. They stompy feet. I mean, well, fuck, even at Disney World, you don't get out of the boat on It's a Small World. No. I mean, shit. What the fuck? Oh, and finally this week, uh, who's taking, who's keeping score? Who's keeping fucking score? Because one of those, we keep telling you not to do this. It's a very common sense thing. We tell you not to do this. And you keep doing this. <laughs> and I want you to stop doing this. I don't know that it's people in our audience. Well, it's the people. Why do you keep doing this? I do kind of wait for the day when we do a story and somebody in the chat goes, oh my God, I finally made it. <laughs> Drunk partiers thought taking the chimney was a good idea. And they probably learned that it's not. New York, a pair of tipsy partiers tried to slide down a Chinatown building's chimney, only to get trapped inside and need firefighters to rescue them out. The pair, Gregory uh, Masul, 28, and Alexia uh, Iludi, 25, went to the roof of 17 Allen Street with the party host and third floor building resident to get a glimpse of New York's sunrise. By 7.30, they were ready to head back downstairs. The two guests inexplicably decided the best uh, way to get to the third floor was via the building's chimney. They dropped down only a few feet and got stuck. Firefighters had to bust into a seventh floor business, House of Marley, which sells Bob Marley memorabilia. That's like one of the, do you ever watch Bob's Burgers? I've seen a couple episodes of it. Every episode, every title intro of the, every episode, there's a store to like the right of Bob's Burgers and it's a different one. It's a different uh, store every time. And each one just seems like incredibly niche. House of Marley. How much business are you doing at the House of Marley? Come on. I know Bob is cool and all, but... Uh. Elodie suffered some bruises. Uh, Masul, a French-speaking man who was wearing blue jeans and no shirt, we have a picture, um, was taken to a hospital with minor injuries. Now, here's where it gets even better. Um, the incident might get the uh, uh, hard-partying third-floor resident and building's owner in trouble with the city's departments of buildings. That's because this building is zoned strictly for commercial <gasps> use. And any evidence of residential living there could bring in fines between $2,500 and $12,000. That'll do it. So not only did you fuck up the party for everybody. For no reason. Like, you weren't locked out. No, you were locked out. You could have taken, your ass could have taken the stairs. Not only did you fuck up the party for everybody because you were, hey, look at this. I'm going to take a chimney. Is shim I is I'm Santa Claus, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I'm Santa Claus, bitch. Except you're not. You're not Santa Claus. Instead of just fucking up the party, you also fucked up this poor guy's business. Which you know, I'm, the more I'm thinking about it, this, this whole House of Marley thing, it sounds like a front. I'm sorry. It's almost certainly. That's a that that is a Marley memorabilia, by which we mean massive amounts of weed. That's a weed shop. That's so that guy potentially is going to get fucked up because they had to bust in there. And you know what? That's that's they they could they don't need a warrant then. So not only that, you also cost the building's owner thousands of dollars because people weren't supposed to be living there in the first place. Well, and the question is, does the building's owner even know that? So 
You are, this is like the biggest party foul of like all you time. Have a parfait of fuck up. <laughs> Everyone is mad at you, and for very good reason. You have made everyone angry. How do you think they were stuck? Do you think they were stuck like next to each other or like one on top of the other? Oh, that could have been even because it looked, look, they're pulling the guy out of the top. So I'm going to presume on top of each other. Okay. I was going to say, like, because if they did, if your dicks touch, you're gay now. Everybody knows that's the rule. Don't laugh. You know that's the rule. <laughs> one of them was French. <laughs> I look forward to your letters. I just easily see this guy getting out of out of the chimney, smoking a cigarette. I don't like fucking care. I do not care. I do not care. So what? Your business is fucked up. I'm not. I can't do a French accent. So what? I don't care. I do not care. <laughs> I uh, do not care. Cause... No, but Jesus. With your French guy, huh? I is a shitty French accent. Okay. Although, you know what? Four years of French. Chimney asked to mouth the Santa centipede. Oh. Oh. RPG oh. oh. I think you've got a franchise on your hands. No. 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 Yeah. Um, do we want to go for this the the, the overtime? Uh, that depends on how bad I sound to you right now. Well, I, I we we this this is one that was was oh oh yeah, th this was presented to me and made me very sad. And I'm going to warn everybody at home, this is not a new thing, because apparently lots of people knew about it. I'm going to ask everybody at home, this may be a bridge too far. If you're letting your kids watch, number one, why? Number Seriously, put them to bed. Number two, no. Get them out. We're, we're not, this isn't, we are definitely out of the kid-friendly territory. Just... Briefly, I did not know this was a thing, but one of our viewers determined to show me that this was a thing. I'm intrigued. Let's share with the class. Oh, I did know this was a thing. I did not know this was a thing. I did. Not because I do it. This but is... This is the splorch, ladies and gentlemen. It is... An egg-laying ovipositor dildo. Yep. It is a floppy. Well, it can't be too floppy. It is a tube, and you take these these gelatin egg gelatin type egg things. Yeah, and you shove it in the thing. And you, and you shove the thing in you, and it impregnates you with a. Jelly alien egg. I don't know why. I don't know what you do with it afterward. I don't know if the eggs are reusable. You know, what you do in the privacy of your own home is fine. You enjoy yourself. I'm just saying, if I'm dating someone and we get back to their place and they say, hey, let's get a little bit interesting tonight. And this comes out and date's over. <laughs> That's it, huh? That's a deal breaker. Thank you for a lovely evening. Goodbye. The owner insists on only being referred to as lone wolf. Oh, okay. Well, apparently he's a Native American, so maybe that's his name. Yeah. And not just, he's maybe not just an internet idiot. I feel like they're, like, there are better uses for this. Like, like, could you make it put in one of those menstrual cups? Then it would be really useful product. 
<laughs> the egg. I, mean, I guess you're just gonna have to cast that egg and fine, but I feel like we could put this to better use. Uh, so anyway. Could you put like Easter eggs in there? That would be the <laughs> <laughs> And then you could literally like dress up as a bunny oh. and put Easter eggs around the house. You could have like a total fetish Easter thing. So what have we learned this week? Because if you have this, you definitely know a furry who has a bunny suit. First thing we learned is how to ruin Easter, apparently. <laughs> um, we've learned... So you're not coming over for our egg hunt this year, huh? We've learned just because you own the store does not mean you can get drunk and flop your dick out in the front shop window. That's no, it doesn't. That's that's not that's not part of the social contract between the buyer and buyee. No. That's that's not No, we've learned that um They're so mad at me right now. <laughs> We've learned if you can get to a certain age, you can get away with any fucking thing. Yeah. I mean, they aren't going to lock their ass up. You might have to pay a fine. Although we also did learn if you get to a certain age, you've got to start to learn to let some shit go, man. Let it go, Elsa. you you got better things to be doing with your golden years. Yeah. We've learned that just because pot is legal in some places does not mean it's legal in all places. Yeah. I and mean, you should be careful about that shit. It's just, yeah, be a little little more, because they, they, they are still locking your ass up. We've learned that it's not okay to go inside the zoo enclosures, no matter, but I want a good picture. Get a fucking chair. Get a goddamn chair. Boost the kid up something. Don't... You just don't need a picture of your kid with a rhino that bad. Yeah. D and finally... We Without that picture, you might not live with it. And finally this week we learned... Chimney, stay the fuck out of the chimney. <laughs> the only thing... Dan and I are obviously perfect for each other because while all of you are horrified, <laughs> he's... He's giggling his face off and looking things up and going, oh, yeah, I've seen those on Pornhub. Hang on. As my man. I don't want one of those. 